today, you guys, I'm going to show you how I make this grid for my windows. I've had a couple of people ask in the past, and I figured, well, let's go ahead and just show you. It's pretty simple, but it is time intensive and kind of tedious. So first thing that we need to do is we really need to know what our dimensions are and we need to know what kind of window we're covering. This is the window that I'm going to be building this second one for. I've already done one grid and that is the front side and then we need to do the back side. So that's what we're working on. I'm, I'm gonna make some assumptions that you know a few things, so I'm not gonna show you every detail. Like, I'm not gonna show you how to cut this out necessarily or measure it because it's fairly simple. But basically all I'm doing is I'm using cardboard. This happens to be the box from a White Claw box, but you could use a cereal box, you could use a graham cracker box, whatever. It doesn't really matter. So what we're going to do first is obviously you need to get it to the size that you want this to be. So the easiest is grab a piece of cardboard, put your piece on there and trace it out and then cut it out. Well, I'm not going to show you that because that is just a lot of extra time that should be self-explanatory. Next, we need to know some dimensions. So we're gonna measure this out. And I do this in millimeters because that makes it a lot easier. This happens to be about, oh, what is that? That's like 71 to, we're gonna call that about 73 millimeters. So if I were to draw this out, because I like drawing things and measuring it, I've got my window kind of like this and this width is 73 millimeters and let's get our height the height is oops i'm looking at inches now height is about oh what are we going to call that 160 167 so we're going to write 167 millimeters from top to bottom. Okay, so I already know that I want to have three, uh, you know, horizontally and one, two, three, four, five vertically. But how did I figure that out? Essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my phone and I'm going to do a calculation. So if I've got 73, Essentially what I do, I've got 73 millimeters. I'm gonna divide that. I know I want more than two, and I might want four. So if I do four, divide that by four, that's 18 millimeters. That, that might work. 18 millimeters is a little bit small. So if I do 73 divided by, oh, what was it, three, that gives me 24. So about 24 millimeters in between. That I think works. So we're gonna write down first 24 millimeters for our horizontal. And then I've got 167 and divide that. Let's say I wanted to do four, divide that by four. That gives me 41, a 41 millimeter window pane. That, that's a little bit big a little bit too big for me. So you could try doing 167 divided by six. Oops, 167 divided by six. That's 27, five eighths, five sixths. That still, that, that might be a little bit too small. So 27, if I were doing 27, that'd be roughly that height. So that, that might work. That's about where we're at. So I think I did, what did I divide that by? I think I divided by, by five. 167 divided by five is 33. Yeah, so 33, that's about what I did. So we're gonna do 167 divided by five. That's 33.4.4. That'll work. Okay, but what we need to do is we need to know that we're gonna have a bit of an edge. So that means that we have to take out that edge. That's gonna be three millimeters. So my three millimeters all the way around, I can start by measuring that out. That's pretty easy. The other thing to note before you get started with this is 
This is my front side. This is my back side. Because I'm doing reverse sides so that both sides are basically the same, I need to make sure that I'm reversing. So it doesn't do me a lot of good to actually have it like this. I needed to do my measurement with the back side when I traced it out. So make sure that you're being cognizant of which way because you really don't want this side facing out. This is much harder to paint. It's not gonna look as nice. You want this to be the part that you're painting. So anyway, that way then essentially what you've got is you've got reverse, you know, mirror images of each other because you don't wanna be cutting them both just like this because if you have any difference in your arch, it's gonna show through. Now, if, if you wound up getting this perfect, you don't have to worry about it. But I didn't get mine perfect because my compass that I was using didn't work great. Anyway, so I'm gonna get my edges measured three millimeters at a go. Make sure that your pencil is sharpened as much as possible and just get through this tedious work measuring this out. You're gonna do a mark, two marks for each edge. That way then you can get a straight line. Try to be as close to accurate as you possibly can because any variation will start to show. Don't worry too much about the arch. We'll deal with that in a slightly less conventional way. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna deal with the arch slightly differently. Uh, essentially what I like to do is kind of just eyeball it, but what I'll do is I'll throw little tick marks, a few on here, you could certainly get your compass out and redo slightly smaller, do all those calculations, get it perfect, and it might be worth it if you wound up getting your initial arch perfect. Why not get it perfect? Mine, I didn't get perfect. So we're going to, as they say, eyeball this sucker and get it close enough. So, I've got this here. Essentially, I'm just going to give it my best go, connecting the dots as close as I can. And there you go. Right, maybe I got that a little bit. There. Good enough. We've got our edges. Now we're going to remeasure and figure out just how much of this we actually have. So going horizontally, we actually have, oh, what is that? 65, 66, 67 millimeters. So if I have 67 millimeters to work with inside and I want each of my bars to basically, let's do this. I want these to be three millimeters each. That means I need to take that into consideration when I'm doing this. Same with these. Every grid is going to be three millimeters. So that means when I do my measurements, I have to take that into account. So 67, I'm going to do these horizontals first. And what did I do here? Basically, these are about the same. It's about 67. That comes in to about 21. At 67, we're gonna divide that by three. 67 divided by three equals 22 and about a third. So we'll just call it 22. So let's do that. That'll give us the center of each of these posts or these grids. So 22. 
10, 21, 2, right there. And then from this side, we'll do 10, 21, 2, right there. That's technically going to be the center of these grid lines. We'll do another set here so that we can connect them. 10, 20, 2, and 10, 20, 2, and then we can connect them. Now, what we're going to do once we get going with this is we're actually going to take a shortcut because this is just the center of our grid line. And this is a lot of extra work that really we don't need to do. Because what we really need to do is we need to do two more lines for each one. We need to do the line on this side and the line on this side. So technically we could just come here and say if we're doing three millimeters, that means that instead we would have a tick mark. Oh, what do we got? One, two, three, or that's two. So we'd have to be at like kind of a half. Well, that makes it a lot harder. So instead, what we actually need to do is we need to measure from this edge and this edge 20 and a half. So I get it. We're sitting at half millimeters. That gets a little bit tough, but it's doable. So instead of doing this, what we're going to do is we're going to do 20 and a half. You can get your pencil as long as it's sharp. You can get your pencil at the half mark. And then from here, you can do Put it right on the, the whole number. Now you do one, two, and three. And now you are going to have just the right measurement. So from here, it's 20 and about a half. And then one, two, three. And we'll do that up here. And if you're doing a lot of these, then you really don't need to do, you know, your center line first and you can just start with the actual measurement. But sometimes it's easier to visualize by putting that center line in first. 20 and a half, and then one, two, three. Because we're talking half millimeter, this is where, you know, accuracy, of course, is desired but it is not imperative. As long as both of them are pretty accurate, you're going to get a nice, straight, clean looking line. Perfect. Close enough. We do a lot of close enough here. Now we need to do our lines. This one doesn't look like it's quite right. Let's go just a little tighter. That's a little more accurate. Okay, so now we need to do these lines. And what would we, what did we decide? 33, we'll just call it 33. So I already know I need to do about 32 because that's what I did with the other, other one. So I'm gonna do 32 from here. 10, 20, 30, two, yeah, 10, 20, 30. Two. Ten, one, three, two. Okay, and do the same on this other side so we know have a nice straight line. So we're going to draw these straight lines, get them on there. Okay, now because we did 32, if I put this on here, and move it to the side a little bit, that means I need to measure down three, down three, because I did these up. So from here, each of these will get another dot. And of course, you certainly could just trace it in next. If, if you've already got one created, 
go ahead and trace it in if that makes sense. I'm treating this as though we're starting from scratch with nothing. That way then you guys know where to begin. And you know what, it's far more efficient if we just go down the entire row. That was the easy part. Now comes the hard, tedious part. And for this, you want to have a sharp knife. I like using my utility knife. It just, I have a mu much better control of it. But make sure that your blade is sharp. And this process, like I said, is going to be very tedious. So essentially what we need to do is we need to cut along all of these lines as carefully as possible. So starting anywhere you want, line that up and using your knife, cut. Make sure that you stop at the intersections. And in fact, stop before you get to it so that you can come the next direction. Keep your fingers out of the way. Be safe. Normally, I'd go through all of these, uh, each horizontal line, vertical line, all together. What we're going to do is I'm going to get a couple of these cut out so that you can just see what this whole process looks like because you do not need to watch me do this entire process. That is just a waste of your time. It's not a waste of my time because I got to do it. This is a very tedious process, but by doing this as one grid piece versus cutting out strips, and trying to glue them together, you're much more likely to have nice, perfect squares rather than trying to join those together as strips. It's just a little bit easier to work with this way, but it's more work. Sometimes a little more work is worth it. So we're gonna do these Horizontals, get those done, and then I'll show you how I do the curve. Actually, I'll show you how this curve works right now. Let's zoom this in. For the curves, I literally just do it by hand, nice and slow tracing along the line. Doesn't need to be perfect, but do as good as you can. And then you're probably gonna have to go over it again, unless you get nice and deep. And then to get these pieces out, more often than not, I have to come in right at the corners of these little, where they join and just Give it a little snip just to make sure that we got all the way in that corner. Being careful not to get too far into the part that we want to keep. And then should pop out. I don't like tearing it out if it's a little bit stuck still. I don't like just pulling it out because then you get that little frayed piece in the, in the corner. So I like making sure that I actually cut it truly out. So I have a nice square edge. And so we do that with each of these curves. The curves are the hardest, but they're actually not that difficult because you don't have to line up 
your ruler. Now you could hand do all of this without putting the ruler. That would be fine, but I find that I get far more accuracy. I'm less likely to slip and screw something up. So that's why I like still using the ruler to get that perfect straight edge. I'm less inclined to make a mistake. So I'm going to cut the rest of these out. I'm not going to make you watch. And then we'll come talk about it at the end. One last note before we go too far. It is important when you're measuring, putting your, your ruler on, especially on these edges, instead of doing it this way. So if you see, if I have it lined up here, you can't see where my lines are. So flip it around. This, these edges are going to be much harder, but you're going to have to hold it down nice and tight. But at least then you can see where you need to start and where you need to end. Otherwise, you're going to wind up accidentally cutting through one of your cross pieces. And then you just have to figure out either are you going to glue it back together, or are you going to tape it. I typically would probably tape it on the back side so it's not it's not something where you're gonna like have to throw it away and start over because I did I accidentally did it right here I cut too far we're just gonna tape it and nobody is gonna notice especially since this particular oh wait I'm getting a little bit of extra movement I keep cutting in a little bit that's where it's important to make sure that your ruler is on there nice and tight. So that edge is going to get a little bit funky looking, but that's okay. I've gone through, cut them all. Hopefully these will just start falling out like so. Probably have a couple that are still caught in there a little bit. Boy, that one didn't want to let go. So any that are stuck, find where it's stuck, pop it out. And there we have it. We've got another Nice grid, throw this on. Let's see, yep, this is the correct side. And look at that. Now you can go a little bit further and you can certainly add another frame around the top like I've done. Um, I can show you that another time, but uh, basically it can either be wood that you frame it in with. Uh, I'm using additional cardboard and I just glued it together to thicken it, and then I'm gonna cut that out. Maybe I'll show you that in another video if you guys think that it's worth it. But this is all it takes, just a nice grid. It takes a lot of time, effort, patience, attention to detail, but once you've got it done, this is really simple to work with. When you're ready to paint it, paint it up, and then you can glue this on. Either you can use hot glue, or you can use uh, regular PLA glue, as long as you have something to press down on it. But this will paint nicely, and you'll have a really cool looking window. So hopefully this was helpful. If it was, make sure that you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, all that stuff. And hopefully I will see you in the next video. Have a good one, everybody.